Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video where today we return with round 12 of the F1 2006 Championship Edition career mode. Yes, we're back this weekend here for the German Grand Prix. Now, it has been a little while uh, since the last race in this series uh, be because I was a moron, unfortunately. Um, obviously, we won the French Grand Prix at uh, Magny Corps. I then obviously finished the race, did the podium celebration, everything like that. Quit out. Realised I'd forgot to auto-save, so immediately jumped back in the game and auto-saved. Uh, and realised that, of course, the race result had been gone. How people can say this is the greatest F1 game ever when it has no automatic saving feature? I don't quite know. Uh, but apparently, though, we had a little bit of a miracle uh, in that regard. Because if we head over to the championship standings, I don't actually believe Michael Schumacher scored any points in the simulated race. It did either there. So, yeah, you can see Fisichella six points clear of Michael Schumacher. We are on 29 points rather than 39. So we have now got a 35-point deficit to Giancarlo with just seven races to go of the season. So we are going to need an almighty push. And today we're back at the Hockenheim ring, which is a very, very scary track in this series. But we're not going to give up hope just yet. We're going to continue to try and fight this out to the bitter end. Let's do this thing here for the German Grand Prix. Well, I'll be honest, yeah, Giancarlo Fisichella has probably been the most consistent of the, you know, the Ferrari or the Renault runners, hence why he is at the top of that group. Certainly hasn't been the quickest, though, over the course of the season. So 35 points with seven races is a huge deficit to try and make up late on this season. It is going to require us uh, just to be scoring good, consistent points week in, week out. But I'm not going to say it's impossible yet. I really don't know what to do with this series uh, if we don't win this season. Of course, I had kind of hoped um, that we could finally put this game to rest for a few months once this season was done. And then maybe I was going to do a series over on Matt 2 and 2 gameplay on the hard difficulty setting. Um, but, yeah, time is running out for us. We need to continue to try and score good points late on. And it just makes you wonder, had it been 39 to 62 points, like it should have been, how much better a chance would we have had late on in this season? That being said, though, of course, we have also been mightily unlucky over the course of this season. Glitches at both Canada and Silverstone probably dogged us, well, probably 20 points at the very least, about 10 or 15. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this game continues just to be very, very brutal uh, against me. Uh, and I, I won't give up until we have won a world championship. It is my sole goal with this game is to finally feel glory uh, once and for all. But I tell you what, once I've done it, I'm absolutely doing an Eco Rosberg and coming away from it. Um, as that was rather lucky there. We've got to be careful through there, apparently, as we head into qualifying. Welcome to the home of the German Grand Prix, Hockenheim. Qualifying is about to start, and after the first 15-minute session, the slowest six cars will take their place at the back of the grid in tomorrow's race. Well, a lot of German drivers, a lot of German teams on the grid this weekend, so they'll all be wanting to deliver. Um, but we did win the other race in Germany this season, obviously back at the Nürburgring. Um, my first win, I believe, of the campaign, and one of only two that I've had so far still in this series. Although I do want to say three, because we did actually win Magni Core. Well, this is always the corner that is terrible on this game. You just want to avoid the curves all the way through. We have got much better at doing that so far this season around most of the venues. But honestly, as we end qualifying, I've got no idea how good the pace is going to be. don't quite think it's going to be like Magni Core. Um, but I'm hoping we've still got the pace for pole. Oh, that's super aguri there. Very, very late on the brakes down at the hairpin. Should hopefully be able to switch them off the exit of the corner there. One thing I have noticed is definitely how not much more straight line speed we have over still some of what I would consider the weakest AI in this game. It really does feel like you are kind of pegged back a little bit in terms of straight line performance. Because that is not the line out of there. Come on, navigating our way through the final corners. We're comfortably quicker than those Super Aguris and the Midlands, as you would certainly hope to be. It's out of the final corner. We are going to do a 1.79. Two seconds clear of Heidfeld. This is easily into Q2. We were helped along a little bit by that Super Aguri with all of the slipstream. Um, but yeah, then of course lost out loads trying to make our way through the hairpin. So yeah, I reckon actually... 
A mid to high 17 is sensibly what we can do. It's just whether we can actually get the lap hooked up reliably. Come on, starting to get held up a little bit behind David Coulthard as we make our way in towards the final sector of the lap. No, we won't. It's an unorthodox place for Coulthard to let me by, but he has let me through. So hopefully we can try and round out this lap then. You can attack that inside curb a little bit. Um, yeah, the outside one is just an instant auto spin uh, with heavy fuel on board. A couple more corners to go, though. This final turn is so hilariously inaccurate. It does always make me chuckle. It is a proper just long flowing corner rather than two 90 degree turns. Uh, but a 17 1 in the end. That was better than I expected. Well, heading into Q3 then, we are the first car out here, and it's pretty simple for us. We just want to try and get a good lap in early on. Um, but yeah, as we said, you know, this is no guarantee at the moment. The AI looks to be very, very quick here as well. So just trying to make sure that we get one lap nailed, especially on the heavier fuel, is actually quite difficult. Let's not forget as well, Toyota did actually have its main Formula 1 base in Cologne. So although this isn't really a German team... There is a little bit of German kind of influence on it, if you will. All right, come on then. First run here. We've got one of the Ferraris right up my trumpet. Um, but it looks like everyone else is a bit more spread out there. You've got to get a wheel back on the road before you cut across the grass. Otherwise, that will be a penalty. Um, but apart from that, it's pretty much anything goes through turn one. Tidy first sector. But I do not want to be given whichever Ferrari car that is. A nice slipstream. Looking at the data from Q1 and Q2, this is going to be the sector where we are really quick against the AI. So hopefully we can try and capitalise on that and really nail it through the final couple of turns. Come on, use plenty of curb on the outside. Whoa, don't get in the gravel. We've just about nudged the gravel trap on the outside there. And it's going to be a 120.0. That's not particularly great. Whatever Ferrari it was behind us goes no quicker. Have we just invalidated? Somehow we haven't. And Alonso then immediately will set a much better benchmark, a 119.1. We simply are just not that quick. Well, either we're not just that quick, or Fernando Alonso has absolutely smashed everyone else here. Because we are still P2, near enough a second off the pace. Off the Spaniard. I hate that wall. And I'm so sorry to whichever Ferrari have just ruined their qualifying as well. But we are out of qualifying then. That is a really costly error. Well, there we go then. P3 on the grid for the German Grand Prix. I feel like we could have been close to Michael and Fernando, but I don't think we would have got the better of either of them. As Fisichella, Massa, Rosberg and Jarno Trulli, all covered by less than a tenth of a second. There is a lot to be decided here. We've just got to try and survive turn one. Quickly though, before we get into this video, I want to thank all of the names you see on your screen. Without their continued support of the channel, none of the work we do here would be possible. And if you want to get your name featured on this list, you can click the join button or click the Patreon link down in my description below and support the channel from just £1 a month. You will also get access to weekly updates about everything going on behind the scenes and also occasionally some early pre reviews on videos so yeah a massive thank you to my youtube members and my patreon supporters and let's get back to the video thanks for joining us here at hockenheim four and a quarter miles of tortuous tarmac that is the home of the german grand prix the drivers like the hockenheim circuit because it produces some great racing rubens barrichello has good memories of this track because he won his first race here back in the year 2000 unbelievably he qualified for the race way back in 18th place. Pretty much perfect weather conditions for racing here today, so we should see some very competitive lap times during this race. Lining up on pole is Fernando Alonso. Second on the grid is Michael Schumacher. They're followed by you in third. Giancarlo Fisichella completes row two. They are followed by Felipe Massa in fifth. Next to him in sixth is Nico Rosberg. Jarno Trudy lines up in seventh. Eighth is Kimi Raikkonen. Well, yeah, the top two then on the grid, certainly the ones you would expect to see in 2006. Fernando Alonso and Michael Schumacher there, but we've got to try and beat the pair of them today. But the big one, of course, is Giancarlo Fisichella. I think, honestly, the psychology we've got to employ between now and the end of the season is just try and take as many points as we can out of whoever is leading the championship. We need to average five over Fizzy each race. 
to make sure you have plenty of spare heat before you start lining up the grid. Which would basically mean, of course, if we were to win every race between now and the end of the season, he would have to finish no better than fourth. Um, which is quite a tall order, but not impossible, to be completely honest. Because, yeah, Alonso and Michael should also be very, very quick. I think all we can really do, though, sensibly, is just try and win as many races as possible. This is a big unknown. Japan is a big unknown. But a lot of the other ones we should be very, very strong at. Maybe the exception of Monza. Alright, come on, though. First goal, like I said, is surviving turn one. Because that is very, very scary here. Haven't got as much temperature in the tyres as I would have liked. And the rest of the field very, uh, kind of split out. Only seconds to go before we're racing. You can really feel the tension. The race is go, go, go! Pretty clean start, but where is Fizzy? He's going to try and slot in behind. Start. It's not such a good start for Raikkonen. The field is tightly packed as they head towards the first corner. Alonso leads out of the first corner, and behind him is Michael Schumacher. You're following him. Fisichella then, I'm sure I'm not his big threat in the championship, at least in his eyes at the moment, but Michael Schumacher, a power move to the lead of his home Grand Prix off the start here. We're going to be under pressure from Giancarlo to make our way through the long right-hander. As well. Alonso wanted to have a look for it. We certainly got a huge boost to speed right at the top end there, but somehow we've survived the start, which is really, really good for us. But yeah, Schumacher, I'm sure the home crowd loving that. Already seems to be a bit of a drop-off further back. Rosberg seems to have tried to attach himself to this top group. And it seems to be our teammate who is perhaps struggling a little bit more as Alonso. Actually not with a lot of confidence early on. Michael Schumacher, yeah, obviously, according to the game, uh, DNF'd at Magni Corso. So he'll be looking for a big result as well. Indicator is showing green tyre. They're heating up nicely now. Grip should be good. I believe we're 25 points behind the Michael as... Well, you're not going to get away with too many of those on this game, and I've got no idea what curb I hit there, but we've got to avoid that in the future. Has there been any real movement, though, on this opening lap? There's been a couple of swap arounds. With the first lap completed, the field looks like this. Michael Schumacher leads. He's up from second. Alonso is second. He's lost a place from his starting position. You're third. Fourth is Fisichella. Felipe Massa is fifth. Sixth is Rosberg, truly seventh, and Barrichello is in eighth. Well, watching the straight line speed of that Renault down there is absolutely ridiculous. Those cars are so astronomically quick, uh, and there's nothing we can do about it apart from make up time in the corners. Oh, we've already got oil down though, Super Guri gone. So, where is that going to be? Probably in a horrible, horrible spot. Yep, on the exit of that corner. Happy we avoided it. But the last thing I really wanted to deal with this afternoon as well is some, uh, you know, slower car traffic. So we've really gone heavy on the fuel here. Going to try and go really deep into the Grand Prix and then hopefully be quick towards the end on fresher tyres than everyone else. But at the moment, yeah, we are able to hang with Fernando. But Schumacher is just waltzing away. Oh, Alonso, a bit of a mistake out of that final corner. Are we going to be close enough to go for something into turn one? Not quite. Uh, but yeah, he'll drop back behind Michael. So are we going to be able to try and get Fernando up at turn two? Michael Schumacher leads. Alonso is second. You're third. Fourth is Fisichella. Felipe Massa is fifth. Sixth is Rosberg. Truly seven. And Barrichello is in eighth. What on earth is powering that Renault? He's pulling out close to a second, I would have thought, down that back straight. He's got to break super early into the next corner, but that thing just takes off. Oh, come on, Fernando. you got to get on with it, buddy. He's going to make another mistake at that final corner. We get alongside him, but again, you get up towards right, fifth and sixth gear. Oh, big scary moment there as that doesn't actually invalidate the lap time, so we shouldn't get a slowdown. Oh, this is really becoming a game of patience for us at the moment. We cannot find a way around Fernando Alonso, who is losing just those little bits of time to Michael Schumacher up the road. I really don't want to have to wait all the way until they pick, because I feel, I hope we're going for an overcut on them, because that is the OP strategy on this game. Oh, Fernando Alonso, you can see how slow he is there. 
And we just give him a little bit of contact at completely the wrong point. We might have been able to switch him off the corner, but not with a line like that. But I've got to be honest, then, at one third distance, this is actually a surprisingly calm Grand Prix so far. Often by this point, we've had seven near misses, three drivers out that have all exploded in front of me. Uh, Michael Schumacher's done a backflip or something, I don't know. Um, but yeah, at the moment, we are just kind of trying to stay settled, stay calm. Hitting our apexes, everything like that. And still, though, hoping for an opportunity to get around Fernando, which might arrive now. Finally! Finally! We get past the Spaniards. That is beautiful. He's probably going to get back past me, though. Oh, Fernando. Is he going to get there? Not quite. That is fantastic for us. Now we can really go and hot pursuit then of Michael Schumacher. You can see already the gap the top five have brought out over everyone else. No one else simply has any pace today. Oh, the way we've romped up to the back of Michael Schumacher. Yeah, we have absolutely got the pace here. Now we've finally got Ryan Fernando. What will the Germans' straight line speed be like? I'm guessing much of the same. Oh, no, Michael, come on. I mean, that's just a brake check, isn't it? On the exit of the final corner. There's no way anyone would ever do that without it being deliberate, which, to be fair, it was Michael Schumacher. It was known, you know, for a few cheeky strategies here and there. Michael Schumacher leads. You're second. Alonso third. Starting to see a few more AI then into the pit lane here. Uh, so when will Michael come in? Oh, we've got to switch him this time. Is he going to break again off that final corner? No, of course he's not. That time around, Michael Schumacher can get out that turn with no problems. Big slide through turn one, but we gather it up. Um, but yeah, now we've got some lap traffic to deal with as well. I think Schumacher's going to get around those cars much sooner than I was expecting. Nope. Looks like... There we go. Oh, come on. Oh, that Midland's going to get out of his way now, as we've got a box end the next lap. So Schumacher has actually done pretty well with how far he's going in this Grand Prix as well. Thank you. That's one of them navigated. Come on, can we try and get the other one on the exit of the corner? Oh, you just never know what they're going to do. You just have no idea. Come on. Out of the way. Thank you. There's Schumacher in. Midland's still there. But we are finally going to take the lead of this Grand Prix. Now we've got to try and push for an undercut. Really, really hope, though, that the team aren't going to be putting a new front wing on the car. Otherwise, that's going to probably mean we're back behind Fernando in this GP. Uh, but yeah, looks like it's going to be... Michael, Fernando, Fisichella and Massa pretty much in that line towards the end. But where will we be out? It's been a solid push lap though, but you can see how badly the tyres are greening towards the end of this stint. Trying to make our way nice and tidy into the pit lane. Oh, I just have no idea how much you can push. Not that much. That wall there I hadn't really spotted was kind of where it was, if you get what I mean. Um, but yeah, plenty of other teams now watching on as I believe we are the last car to make a stop it needs to be good and luckily it doesn't look like they're doing the wing either oh not fantastic last here now and it looks like rain might be on the way fortunately it looks like it's still a fair way off and we should be finished here before it hits oh that was really scary just for a moment then I think rain we'd have no chance crazy wait till the green but we have jumped Michael Schumacher then in the pit lane. That one lap overcut has made the difference. Are we going to be vulnerable though down this back straight? Or are we just going to try and run away? Comes the German. Is he going to get to the inside? No. Late on the brakes there. We've been confident into that braking zone all day. Come on. Let's just try and build up a little bit of a buffer. Oh, we're just one third of the race left to go. I think we should only have to lap those three cars again. Uh, but just like we saw in Magni Kill, that might sometimes not be so easy. All right, come on. We want no trouble. We want just the back markers to jump out of the way in predictable locations here. Two Midlands, one Super Aguri. It's all we need to deal with. It's hopefully going to be the last hurdle this afternoon. What are they doing? That Midland is so widely unpredictable. It's all over the road through those final couple of corners. A super why? Why on earth would you think that's the idea? Down towards turn one, they start moving off the line and then break and go back onto it. 
Oh, the blue flags on this game, man. They've taken 20 years off my life. Come on, one more. One more to navigate here. Please be less problematic than the other two have been. Uh, that's not quite what I meant. Almost doing a Sebastian Vettel there. But we'll get away with it. Luckily, there seems to be a thin strip of AstroTurf that came in clutch. I mean, what is that? Come on, get down the inside. Go, 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 go. Don't swipe at me. Why? Oh, man. Come on. Four laps to go. Let's just get this thing to the flag. Starting the final lap then. Oh, no. Why is there Royal Like, No, please. The final lap of the race in the lead. If you're going to do anything, make sure it works first time. This is the last lap for you. That is why who's broken down on the apex of turn one, man. I think it's a BAR late on in the day. But we have just kept it cool, calm and composed, especially when we were stuck behind Fernando not so early on. And it looks like we are finally going to be reaping the rewards here. We've got almost a 10 second lead over Michael Schumacher. We really have just been able to stretch our legs towards the end of this race in what should be our third win in a row. Yeah, it really does make you think we should be a good championship threat still. By the end of the year, we've just got to keep it clean and tidy, keep it composed, and keep taking points out of everyone uh, that we need to be here. And, well, hopefully, we're about to go two for two at the German races this season, which not many people have ever won two Grand Prix in the same country uh, in a season. But as we navigate our way, then, through the final few corners, we have got one of the Williams there. I think that's Mark Webber. Who's had a torrid day out there, pretty much worst of anyone that isn't a backmarker. But through the final corners, it feels good to be back on top once again. The championship dream is not over yet. We will take victory at the German Grand Prix. You've done it. That's a truly momentous win. You take maximum points from this Grand Prix. Michael Schumacher will take second place. It's been a captivating weekend here at Hockenheim. Plenty of action plenty of surprises it's been typical of the type of racing we get here i've enjoyed it enormously and we hope you have too next stop on the formula one circus is just seven days away with a trip to the tight and twisting hungara ring 19 kilometers outside of budapest we look forward to you joining us there for the action see you next week goodbye well i'm sure nico rosberg and nick heidfeld gutted in the end just to miss out points at their home grand prix um, but yeah, it looks like it was Jensen Button who broke down right at the end there. Takuma Sato earlier on in the day. Not a weekend to remember for the Honda-powered cars. But that means taking a look at the Drivers' Championship. We are now 30 points back behind Giancarlo Fisichella and up into P6 as well of the Drivers' table. Two points away from Juan Pablo Montoya there. But 14 points covering our top four. It is all still to play for late on in the season. Trulli picks up a good helping of points to promote himself back to P13. But really, yeah, he should be aiming for a top 10 by the end of the season there. And still Mark Webber and Jacques Villeneuve unable to get off of the starting blocks. Ferrari now one point ahead of Renault. We are 11 back from Honda. So we definitely want to be doing best of the Japanese teams by the end of the year. And maybe, just maybe we can get close to McLaren as well. But thank you all so much for watching. If you have enjoyed, please do make sure to leave a like, get yourself subscribed, and I will let you enjoy another of F1's most cursed podiums.